Hello everyone, quick question, I guess, announcement after the video. Um, yeah, we're, we're finishing the League of uh, Heliot Scales. Um, yeah, I have another one in the pipeline, let's say, for next time. But I would like to ask you, what do you guys think about me exploring some kind of historic content? Um, basically, um, the reason I'm saying this is because I was watching some streams yesterday, I mean, and there's many reasons, but one of them is like, Historic look, looks really, really cool, like as a format in general, even though I think they're kind of maybe meddling with it a bit too much. And it's funny how the popular formats are always the ones that Wizards tries not to push. They tried to push Pioneer like crazy, nobody gave a damn. Then they, they, they tried to push Standard and people start playing Historic. They tried to move away from Modern and now it's probably one of the most... Uh, well, historic is the most popular format in the game right so it's always funny how by them trying to put their fingers into something they actually make it maybe worse for the, for the players so i hope they don't keep this trend of printing super powerful cards in historic that will actually end up ruining the format most likely because if, when you start printing cards like collected company fiction tower ulamog and stuff like this you you're actually you know pushing out a lot of the other cards which is the kind of the point of historic which is to have an extra life for those standard cards you can no longer play but I'd like to sp uh, explore the format for main one reason is that I think it's actually very visually appealing. So it could be that that will help more people actually watch this channel because they will see, you know, they will see those gameplays, they will enjoy them, and then maybe they will stick around to watch also the modern hunting skills content, and then they will actually enjoy hunting skills and modern and you know move into modern eventually. That's kind of what I did. I started playing Marina, and then eventually transitioned to modern once I found something I. I like so maybe that could be you know like a route of uh, getting new players into modern into hundred skills and also it's kind of a nice way for me to kind of uh, slowly kind of expand my audience uh, if you wish and also in a way um oh God, I just had a idea I was not recording in a way I think it would be fun for to do something a bit different you know like, the only problem I have is I really don't know what to play I have most of the lands in historic like the shop lands and the Checklands and yeah, I have most of them and I have most of the temples because I was a smart boy when I started playing arena and I said okay let me craft first all the lands. I think I started playing mono blue and then start playing merfolk. So actually I could probably play Merf merfolk in history with collected company. I don't know if it's good or not. I'm probably a bronze. So I think it would be rather cool to see you know I haven't played really arena in like maybe a year since you know I, I started playing around like a modern around July, uh, June last year, Magic Online in July, August. So, uh, yeah, it could be that um, I'm probably at the lowest end of the of the ladder, right? But it would be kind of cool to see if uh, how long it will take me to climb. Have I improved as a player? You know, I remember having quite the hard time getting over like gold, platinum. I made it to diamond once, but that was it. I wonder if like it would be rather easy or not to make it to. Me think maybe now that I have all this experience playing hard skills and playing modern, which I could say is a more complex format. Anyway, let me know what you think. And yeah, if you like the content, please like, comment, subscribe. I'm really happy of the let's say reception that my video on on the Crystal Giant and Scabby Recon Miner had. That was really cool. I could make I okay make videos like this. I have a few ideas already, but in if there is something you want me to talk about, let me know down below and I will make it happen. Hello everyone, and between that uh, preliminary, I just feel like playing a bit more, so I'm gonna play a, another game. First match I, I play against uh, uh, Dredge, and uh, honestly, I have to say, it, I think we could have won. I think our opponent had like, I mean, if you saw, it was like triple clipping chill, four price amalgams, two super gongols. I mean, like they had everything, and we were so close to winning. We were like one line away from winning, so very tiny margins, but that's kind of a Dredge for you. I'm playing against Monis 0801. Okay, this hand is good, I guess. Yeah, keep it. You can even play Spike Feeder and Hound Skills turn two. Chancellor of the Tank. Oh no. Oh, playing against Neoform. Maybe we just dead. No, it's a serum vision. Okay. Why would they like this? Why would they play this? Nobody ever uses this for a fair, for a fair purpose, let's say. <laughs> so, our elf, pass the turn. I mean, if it was only when you're on the draw or something like that, the green. 
Yeah, I guess maybe we take the second loss, like the third loss of the deck. Ever, basically. I mean. <sighs> what to do? We can play Concliffe. I mean, the thing is, I don't see. I guess we can play Concliffe Mentor, Spike Feeder. No, we cannot play Concliffe Mentor, Spike Feeder. We can play... I just want to put as much power as I can on the battlefield. So I can play Hunted Scales, Concliffe Mentor, and Arbor Elf. Or I can play Concliffe Mentor and Scavenging Wizard. I think that's probably the best, so we can actually hit them next turn. That's a mistake. So I need to go like this. So we just basically need to attack them. No creatures on their yard, but yeah. Okay. So we really need to take to deal them damage, damage. So actually, so we can play scales, we can play the Anafenza. We can play an Arbor Elf. If we don't play scales, the problem is this will get the counters, right? So we don't actually want to tap this. We actually would like to attack with this. So I can make double white, play the Arbor Elf, this triggers, and we attack for this. Double white, play an Offensa, play Arbor Elf. This gets two count. Oh, we can choose. We, of course, give it to this guy. And then we attack for seven. That gives them one less uh, activation of Gris of Rant. I have only one activation now. So now they gain life. Cool. They are turn again. Um. <laughs> So, is it better to play the scales and tap this guy, for example? No, this guy gets counters. So we don't want to... Because we can play the PS Pro, put it here, play the, play the Spike Feeder. That trigger here. Hopefully, if we... If we... Okay, what we can do here is make here, we get six mana. We play scales, we play spike field, we have two mana flooring. Now it will be too much. I think we just uh, either play the scales. Uh, no, that's probably not good. So we play the PS Pro, put it here. Play green, Up for green. Play spike feeder. Attack with all creatures. They are currently at eight, so they have one activation board piece of brand. We still can lose, but yep, we win. Okay, they didn't find it. They missed the coin, coin flip. How is this going? Okay, we still have time. So again, this day we want this, 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 we want this. We don't care about this. Uh, this goes away. <laughs> this doesn't do anything. Too too slow. Guess the combo is good against Ranger Captain is good. Guess this is too slow. Hmm. I guess Scanning Moose's don't do much. Your rune doesn't do much, and. I guess Audio Champions doesn't do much don't do much either. So maybe I just wanna have instead um a... 
Okay, one collected comp, and we have so few. Yeah. It's just a beater, you know. All right, all right. Well, we have we have hate, we have a path, and we have damping sphere. Oh, actually, this card is secretly good against them. You know why, guys? Because this triggers when the Alustaros Rider enters the battlefield. This could actually could actually come up. I think I can cut a captain just because. Yeah, I guess captain is one of our best cards. Um. Ah, what do I cut? Mm, okay, I'm gonna cut a scale because I don't want to do two. This matchup is all about stopping their combo. Oh. Yeah, we have turn two interaction, turn three, I have him mid sensor. I think this is as good as it gets. You know, we play Damping Sphere, then we flash into the Avim even mid sensor when they when they sacrifice the uh the dude. Let's assume visions. Of course, on the play, I would be much more confident. The play. Okay, that's good. This is good. So I can play this. White. As it turns on next turn, we can actually even meet sensor if they don't if they don't kill us right now. Then I can. Oh, that's an all stars right. Maybe just that. New form, yep. Okay, opponent. Yeah, we're on the draw, so I mean, on the draw, you lose sometimes this game. Maybe they just weave. They have two draw steps, and then they need to find a nurturing, nurturing shoal or whatever it's called. They do. Yeah, not the most interesting television, I guess. Yeah, now they, they find their gorm so they can have more stuff. How does this like ever, like ever beat uh, uh, like Force of Negation? Like, I mean, there's no way, right? You can win that. I mean, they still need to gain life, I guess, somehow. And then now they can Mana Morphos, play a Laboratory many, but they still need to gain life. They will just win. Oh, green. I have this wild counter card that they can cast and then. Oh, not mana. Blue, white. I think it's wild counter that it says something like you gain life as equal to the amount of life you've lost this turn. Yes. Yeah, so Do it. Oh, we lost. Cool. Okay, now we're on the play. We were on the play there. We got a one. Do we change something? No. Money 0801 wins the game by drawing a card while their, their, the Larry has no cards in it. Yes, I like to play first. Mm. Is this good enough? I mean, this can kill the dudes, but uh, I guess this can kill the Rizal brand. It was just that. I mean, with that turn one, there's nothing we have in turn one that can win the game. So that's, there's no point. They have chance of the tank. They're probably dead. So. If they win turn one, there's really there's nothing we can do. Like uh, there's no turn. We have path to exile, but we have two paths to exile and a holdback, right? So 
in life. Okay, they missed. The problem is here is if I, I mean, they don't have a land, right? They, they need to at least a land too. Do they want to play the Arbor Elf or do they want to play something? I, I like the Arbor Elf actually. So there are no lands in hand. They just want to gain some life there, kind of randomly. So... Actually, should I not fetch there? But whatever. Four mana in hand. So I think he's gonna play... Uh, just play the Heliod, right? Heliod, Spike Heliod. Okay, uh, I could play the Helio this turn and hit hit them, and then play Conclave Mentor the turn after. You know, so I can play Conclave Mentor the turn after, holding up Perch. It doesn't look like they will do it this turn, right? So let's play the Helio, hit them for one at least. I mean, they could maybe do it this turn, I guess, but they don't. Land would be nice on the top. It's also kind of nice. So we will come here. What? Uh, now we have five mana available, so we can play Conclave. Oh, yeah, we, we got this actually. So, ah no, we actually need to untap. Okay, we need to take one turn more. I'm gonna hold on the Celestial Porch there. I'm gonna hold on the Celestial Porch. And, um... Play Gemstone, okay. And now we won. Not infinite life is infinite damage. So the reason I kept the mana up there is like I didn't I think I had it so I didn't want to go and, and spoil it, right? We kept a no lander. It's kind of funny. Okay, you wait. Why do you ask for it then? I know, I know. I, mean, I have 70 minutes to do this. It's a matter of doing it, I guess. So we will uh, do this for a bit. So I will get this to be. I think now this should be fine. Okay, you just can see. So then, basically, yeah, I know you know you guys know how this works, right? At this point, we just start putting counters from the spike feeder onto the onto the complementer, and we win again. Nice. We beat the neoform. And what is this going? Okay, one game still going on. We are two and one currently, and there's apparently three three zeros, three zero on this deck in this list. I mean, in this league as well. Anyway, I'll see you for the next one. People. What's happening, people? Welcome to the league. We are currently uh, three and zero. We beat Neoform, very close match. We beat Humans, extremely close match. And then we beat something else I have forgotten because I played a bit much later. But anyway, I actually don't remember. It was a two zero, so I guess we can check it out while we 
Wait. What did we play again? It was called Oglo. Uh, in the morning, sometimes it's hard to find a game. Oh. And was great. Uh, yeah. uh. Hmm. It's like somebody else played this game. Ah, oh, yeah, I remember the Blood Moon deck. Okay, yeah. That was like Blood Moon. Like a blue moon, I guess, with uh, islands and... I don't know. Didn't seem they could stand a chance, honestly. So, we are on the match four. Mm, we're playing against Daniel Stallone, known actor. I think I they have Lurus. Yep, we're playing against a Lurus deck. Well, I guess we have uh, Audio Champion. And... The thing is... Do we even want to play this Arbor of turn 1? I don't really want to shock myself, right? Well, I'll keep this hand for sure. But the Arbor Elf doesn't really add much to the... To the... Let's say... Yeah, if we play the Arbor Elf and then they kill it, which they probably will, then we cannot really um, play the Oryx Champion. Maybe we could just shock in a Temple Garden. I mean, it's worth it. Yeah, it's probably worth it, right? You could also just play the turn. Ah, it's kind of worth it because... Hmm, it's worth it, though. Because that about elf will just eat a, a bolt. And if it is a bolt, if it is a lava dart, it's bad. But if it's a bolt, it's not too bad. Okay, I made my decision. So this is like the deck, you know, you play all the time around against. And I think this deck is quite good. Uh, feeling that... So if they lava dart this, it's, it's bad, but it's not. It's bad, but anything else, if they bolt it, if they do whatever, it's okay. So they shock for this block crypt. They play a second soul skirmish. That's quite scary. Well, this is not a. And they actually do have the lava dart. Well, it happens. Um, but if they didn't have it, I think it would have been okay. Like the risk. Let's say we lost two life. And they, let's say they use a follow push event or something. We're gonna block. That's the third spike feeder, interestingly enough. So I'm just gonna go in for the big difference being player draw in this matchup, and we are on the draw. But we have the Oryx champion now. Main deck. So this has protection, this can stop. One of the attackers, and I'm gonna play the second one spy feeder next turn, block, gain life, you know, and try to stall, try to find a collector company. Oh, this is a third sword coming, yeah. But yeah, we're we'll gonna say always heal, always yes, because we wanna gain life all the time. I don't know, why wouldn't you wanna gain life? In another life, and the seal of fire is gonna say always heal to their things. It's quite strong, quite strong, but they have zero cards in hand right now, opponent. Only the seal of fire can kill the spike feeder, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess I can just pass. Block here. We're 13 already, which is bro. Um, okay, more lands. I feel like I've been having the best of luck. I will play this spike feeder. I mean, they will use the seal of fire on it, but at least I get to I get to uh, gain four life off it. Maybe they don't even do it. I guess they can do it on their turn. But I have a card in hand. Let's see what it is. They have a lava dart as well. So this seal of fire. Okay, so we just gain some life. I mean, obviously, not the dream, but. I guess they can get lures in their hand now, and that would be quite scary. But we're still 17, that's not too bad. Mm. We have another spike feeder, and you have really good odds. Okay, they get lures in hand. 
So we'll block one of these dudes. We'll take uh, we'll take three damage. Conclave mentor. Guess I could play this on spike feeder the next turn. Maybe. I mean, I like playing this, just it gets us some life, which is already good. And then next turn makes our spike feeder a 3 3. And there's also a decent blocker in case they, they only play Lurus next turn. So, you know, Irish Champion has gained like 3 or 4 life already, so that's really, really good. I wonder if I should save the Arbor Elf. Maybe that was a better line. So, actually, they can, damn, they can actually play Lurus and bring back the Seal of Fire, which is a real. Rather unfortunate. So they found a line that didn't need to do this pretty busted play, honestly. Oh, we're going to lie from this, I guess. That's the consolation. Ah, no, zero because of this stupid Oscar mage. We take six this time. Maybe I could have saved. Actually, that was probably a bad play to play the Conclave Mentor there. Maybe I should have just saved it. Ah. Okay, this is actually not too bad. We got an extra Spike Feeder that I actually doesn't die to Seal of Fire. So we're gonna play the Spike Feeder. <sighs> so yeah, we just pass the turn. Wait to see if we can draw something, uh, something good. Groxa, bro. You also play Groxa. Oh, we don't lose life, but yeah. They take out one spike feeder. That's a probably. They get back the seal of fire. Actually, you could even get back the Groxa, right? <laughs> that would make it a. Uh... So I can decide if I want to gain 6 life. What is better? I gain 6 life, I go up to 18, or I block something, and then I, I go up to 14. Pretty much the same, right? Actually, it's, it's better to gain life, so... Mm. I kind of need to draw a collected company, basically. We'll take. I'm gonna block the Lurus here. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can safely block the Lurus because. I don't know, this will not kill us, but close. Um, so they can lava dart us. We take. Plot. Three times. Four, well, okay, we'll go to five. One can hand my opponent. Well, that's a Heliot. I don't know if that's enough, though, but... Um... Oh, we still had Spike Feeder. So we can block, give it Lifeling. And then we take four. Maybe. It doesn't have anything in... Ah, they have the Seal of Fire, so we're dead. Yeah, we're dead. There's no, no reason to waste time. Pretty brutal, I must say. But, I mean, they had, like, four dudes died, so... We like removal on this matchup, we like this, uh, we like Idol of Rhetoric, I think we even like the... Uh, and actually, I mean, think the Bale is also good. Yeah, let's, let's see what we got, though. Nefenza, probably not the dream. I think I'm pretty inclined to just cutting the Idol Elf in this matchup. Probably cutting one Ballista, just because we don't want to go down to too many non-creature spells. I think Witness, the one, it's... Has one toughness too, so can go. Um, well, I'll give her runes. I don't know what how I feel about Dromoka's command. It's 
This is a creature. I mean, this can be actually quite the blow up. Like, if you stop a bolt and fight a creature, I mean. Uh, where are the other enchantment? Which. I mean, they could have Blood Moon, I guess. Do we need the two Knight of Autumns? I don't think so. I, I, the, the only thing is, do I think Bale is good? Maybe we could just go down with one Bale, one hundred scale, something like this, so we get rid of some of the clunkier cards. I think Scanning was is good because it can eat the Lava Darts, and we have uh, 25, 23 creatures. Not a lot, it's not a lot. Maybe we could cut one Valkyrie Ballista and get something else in, like... Um... Night of Autumn? I could also kind of collect a common, but it seems that this can... Uh... Yeah, Night of Autumn gains life, I guess, and it can stall. Living in one walking Ballista, I don't even think... Is it worth it? Else, if we only have one Ballista, it's probably worth it. It's a bit of tension with this deck, right? Between keeping enough creatures for Collected Company and bringing enough sideboard cards. Now we're on the play. Of course, being on the draw, not the dream in this matchup. Hmm. I mean, this hand is actually really good if we're able to find a, a land in our top two, I guess. So, even if it's even if we're not able to find a land, we still have a decent decent cards. So. And if we find a land, it's great. So it has a, like a high upside, and the downside is not so bad. Like playing Conclave Mentor turn two is not so bad. Uh, you know. Well, that tells me they don't have Monastery Sweet Spirit, which is good. They check us. I guess they have a Thoughtseize, maybe. I guess they take the Heliot. Maybe even play the Scavenging Moose, you know. Eat that Misha's bubble if we get to untap. If we get a lion, we I'm gonna get play scanning also need the Misha's bubble. Right away. Mm, choices here. We can play Ooze, eat bubble. That stops the Lurus, but of course the most likely fate of the I also like playing Mentor, playing this tap. Yeah, playing Mentor tap or even Ranger Captain. So we play the Mentor. We put we play the Temple Garden tap. If they follow push this or bold this, it's not the end of the world. And then next turn we can play the Scavenging Moose. If the Mentor has survived, then we can actually even eat our own Heliot and make it a four four the Scavenging Moose, which will dodge bolt. Seal of Fire is probably here the worst. Actually, a Soul Scar Mage into Seal of Fire is probably the worst. 15. Not a Thought Seas, that sucks. But I mean, you can really. Oh, they take the Captain, they don't take the Scavenging Moose, interestingly. Okay, they even have the Fado Push. Hey, they're playing the Control deck, I guess. Um. Okay, so I will look for a forest and make this a 4 4. I don't think they have. Uh... Mm. We don't have the Eternal Winds in our deck, so it doesn't matter. We make this a 4 4, gain 4 life, and pass the turn. Next turn, we can exile the Misha's Bubble. So they cannot cool. They're gonna take the damage to attack. I don't want this to die. This can become a 5-5 five five next turn. Oh my god, man, they have all the answers. Jesus. And we didn't draw a single single Velos. No, we only have one Velos summer, that's true. Uh, yeah, the thoughts is, is really got us this game, man. Yeah, now we were just... Now we're in a bad spot. Because we're forced to play this Spike Feeder or else we may play Coxa and make us this color card. We have a Braid. Okay. 
And now we are just training one for one and they are much more efficient than us. I mean, we can still draw collective company and turn this around. Which we have not seen this matchup yet. But yeah, they're at 11 though, so they have taken a lot of damage. Um, well, that's a way to go about it. <clears throat> so I think I like this for Captain of Eos. Mm, I think I'm gonna get the. Ooh, we actually cut a lot of the targets for this. <laughs> I just realized now. I'm gonna get the Ballista. We draw line, we can make it the 3 3. This is probably the one that like, trades up the best. I'm not gonna play it now though. If they want to fight, I'll push this, so be it. 3 3. Actually, have a ball. So we sack. I really didn't think about it. Maybe I should cut a few captains of views and keep more. Okay, this. Okay, they kind of cast this, thankfully. That would have been brutal. The problem is they have Lurus, right? So even if we. Uh, I think I have to um, play the Ballista and uh, shoot down the Abad of Kedal Keep. I don't have a lava bar that I can see. I actually have not drawn a, or any of our sideboard cards. <laughs> so next turn we can pump and kill this one of steady sweeps. So we have two of them. So actually they're only at ten. It's a good time to just be aggressive. But oh, they also have lava bars. I for ah, I thought I'd forgotten it happened. Okay, that's a collected company. We pass. So ah, I should of course shoot them down for the for one there, but I was FC. My bad. This happens more often than it should. They got lures in hand. If they attack, we can actually I mean we were a bit lucky with this collected company, we can actually do a lot of damage. They could lava dart though, we need to think about that. But then so okay, let's say if we we can eat stuff. So I don't think I need to block because if I block, they can lava at me, and that's not cool. And I know, I know they could actually. So I can eat, I just want to make it big, so I'm going to eat this guy. And actually this will give you two counters because Heliot is one of a card. I'm going to eat the Lava Dart now. Mm. I give this Lifeling as well. Can I kill them though? They are nine. I have three green mana, so I can eat one creature, two creatures, three creatures. That would put yeah, that's that's lethal. So they have a creature here that I can eat. No, but I have one here. I will eat this. And I will eat. Oh, the Scanjingo is coming in strong here. And then I can even give this lifeling and win. Yep. All right, onto the game. I mean, I just realized I got way too many <laughs> targets for that. Arbor Elf. Yeah, Arbor Elf just doesn't feel good. Mm, maybe an Offensa is just fine. My second ballista is fine. I actually like the veil. They have so many things. Um, uh, I think this can be bad because they can just react to the to it and kill something. The twenty six creatures. Okay, this is this is fine. Um, I 
think this matter is just not about scales, honestly. I mean, it could be, but it's a lot more about grinding, and this is a card that doesn't do much unless it's. This card is not so grindy, so maybe I should just have the eternal witness. Kind of all in on, on three plays, that. Let's go. Yeah. I mean, opponent had a lot of removal this game. I think we were able to get one Thoughtseize or one Angra's Rampage. Okay, this hand is very medium. It has Collected Company. It has Scavenging Moose. Oh, I'll keep it. Also, we could just play Thoughtseize, right? But, okay, that's so strong. Uh, drawing a path to exile would be great. Okay, we don't. Um, just gonna play this, pass the turn, find a um, tempo garden tap. I think I'll need to put the third path to exile on. Seems to be something I'm missing, kind of. Like I'm not drawing enough path to exile. Like if we have path to exile here, it would be such a blow up for opponent. Especially if they got something else to pump this. The other thought is it's not good for us. We take Lamentor. Three damage already. Oh, Silofire can kill the Scanning Moose. It's pretty brutal. Four damage. I mean, I'm just gonna for example cut them out. It hit us for 4, we go down to 15. Hmm. The check our top. That doesn't mean. They could have done it in our upkeep and just... More lands, man. More lands. That sucks. <laughs> so I think the only option is to play Temple Garden tapped and uh, pass the turn. Then next turn play the Scanging Moose and try to eat something before the Isilo fire me. And then the turn after play the Collected Company. That's kind of my plan. Try to survive until the Collected Company. So... Holy shit, they have... Man, they bring this in and we have literally four instants. Brutal. Opponent had it all, like both this game and last game they've, they've been having it all. Um, I guess also Seal of Fire is really good against the Scanning Moose because it will, oh my god, more land. <laughs> but I guess I kind of actually have to play it. So if they Seal of Fire this, I can, I can. How can they, like, they bring this in? It's so bad this card against us. <sighs> the seal of fire, I will eat the conclave mentor. Hey, they don't even seal of fire. Um, could eat the mission's bubble or could eat the conclave mentor. They will, they will just get the. Just trying to make it a longer game. They have uh, answers for absolutely everything we're playing. At least they cast it on their turn. I guess they want to save the mana for Lurus. Yep. Four, four lands in hand, that's actually extremely bad. Plus, still Portugal be a good draw as well. We could uh, exile the Lurus at least. Bale of Summer, not in time. So, I'm gonna play Horizon Canopy. This way, I can draw a card, right? And then we'll have four mana anyway next turn. So, I'm just trying to look for the Collected Company. Maybe the Bale will do it, but I'm pretty sure they will just cast the Lurus. And they even have a second Mishas bubble proof. If they thought scissors or something. No. Damn it. So they have these three black spells and then we do a veil right after. Yep. That's two cards are drawing. I mean after this we I think we 
We really need to find a haymaker like uh they know actually what we're drawing as well. We take the three. No, actually I'm not gonna take the three, I'm just gonna draw now. Why not? Maybe it's a path. No, it's a captain. We know what we draw the next one. They don't know about the veil though. That's something. Um I'll find a ballista. I could stack this uh, at their upkeep and prevent them from casting like a Mishas Vowel or something. I actually would rather they somehow play an Angra's Rampage or something and we veil it. That would be the dream. Well, that's good for us. That's a collective company. That's yes, extra from blue, but not from black. Another seal of fire. I'm probably gonna jump and sack. I'll jump and sack here so they don't make life. I mean, I guess they can double seal of fire me. Okay. Am I dead? Oh yeah, I'm just dead, right? Four, nine, if they have another... They cannot cast anything else though, so I go on to... Huh. And I'm dead, I'm dead. Damn it, man. So close. Ah. <sighs> yeah. Bro. Okay, I guess we lost. It happens. Let's play another match. Uh, I guess, I mean, this deck is very hard to beat unless you have like a very, very good draw, I guess. Like, I mean, we just had an awful draw. Maybe you should just mulligan, but they have Thoughtsys, so it's a thing that's, it's a Thoughtsys deck, so you cannot really afford to mulligan. I just need to draw up. I think one thing I'm gonna change on this deck like, I've been thinking about it, but for the next leak. I will most likely cut... I was thinking of cutting the Eternal Witness. Adding Night of Autumn and doing this. So we get a bit more removal. Then the Relic, I'm not like a, being a super fan of the, the idea of the Relic. But... I've been thinking that it could be maybe something a bit better than a relic. Could play on a third veil. As you can see, veil sometimes is. And on offense, I've been thinking we'd like maybe to play a second giver of runes. Probably more a more an impactful card. And I don't know what three mana spell I would like to. I'd like to have here some kind of. Uh... Hmm. I thought about the Hushbringer. Hushbringer stops uh, Titans. We haven't seen many of them, but. I think it stops Titans and it actually doesn't really only stops Aureak Champions in our deck and Knight of Autumn. I could also see myself playing a third Knight of Autumn. Okay, why in the play? Good luck, same to you. Okay, we have a bit of a risk here if we play, our, if we keep this hand, but I mean, 10 just has a lot of upside, right? So I'll keep it. I'll Temple Gun and Arbor Elf. Oh, Weirdens. Burn maybe? 
Okay, that's a bolt. Okay, I'm just gonna play that one off. If they bolt it, they bolt it. One last bolt that goes into our face. Is this burn? We're playing against this deck. Who would have thought? In the year 2020. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So now I need to think what I do with my all my mana. Can play Captain and Hand Scales or Hero Runes and Hands and Ranger. I cannot play Hero Runes and Ranger. So I guess I'll just Oh my god, I messed up. <sighs> oh, I was thinking too ahead on myself. Okay, I guess I'll just play the Conquest Mentor then. Whoops. That's what you get for playing like talking while playing, I guess. Oh my god, we're playing against a prison deck. Hey, I mean Ah, uh, I see. Okay, this, this is an activated ability, of course. Okay, I'm, I'm an idiot. I know now. I know my mistake now. So I can just play the Captain of Eos, I guess, and just start attacking. Or I can play the Anafenza and the Hand Scales. Now I know what happened. I was a bit like, um, I just. But I need to pay two mana to play to activate the Arbor Elf. Like four mana to activate the Arbor Elf doesn't seem fair. <sighs> we don't really have a way to win, I think. I mean, I guess if we find. Oh, it didn't play this. Okay. Life. I guess Eternal Witness can get it back. I mean, yeah, we can play both. Um. Doesn't matter. Oh, we got a Conclave Mentor. Hmm. Make this bigger because it's a. Uh... And then bigger as well. So we attack with five. And next turn we play Conclave Mentor. Keep pumping. Okay. They an offense, man. No. No mercy. Um, I can pay two life and attack for seven. I mean, I can pay four mana and attack for seven. I think that's the way to go. Oh, this kind of deck just makes me makes me very sad, you know, to play against something like this. So it's like, will they draw the final lock piece or not? That's kind of the what the game comes down to. At four, okay. Even if they draw a second ghostly prison witness, kill them with eternal witness. About this beautiful art. Thanks, Econo. And we win. So, um, most of what they play is white. They don't do it. Ah, oh, it's good. I'm thinking of cutting it from the deck, but. Good luck, have fun. Oh, you just said good luck. They just said good luck. They didn't say have fun. So. 
All right, what is not good? I mean, this has protection from wool, right? So I guess they're gonna get removed from with like bolts and stuff they have. Um, activated abilities are not the dream. So I think the spike feeder, Iliad, like spike feeders in general, will not do it this game. Because if we need to pay two every time we, we activate an ability, I'm just gonna leave one. And I think it's kind of the same with Walking Ballista, I guess. The rest is uh, whatever. Yeah, Arbor of is not a man ability, it's an activated ability. Sadly for this matchup. Oh. The one-off possibility of drawing two lands and not being uh... basically, I think we cannot afford this hand because if we don't draw forest, we just lose because they will just put too many pieces in play. Okay, double use the PS Pro. Is it a captain hand, or is it a? I think we're gonna ditch the captain actually because we can play land, serial for temple garden, tap, get the PS Pro. Next turn, we if we don't draw another land, we can play get the PS Pro and harness scales, and then this will make the ballista better. I guess this can also stop matches. Captain. Inspiring Vantage. I'm not very inspired, man. Okay. They also exile a Simeon Spirit Guide for that. Okay, I actually just realized I cannot cast this. Okay. Well, well, we just got locked out. This is such so cheesy to play. Like, I mean... Ugh. Just... So cheesy, man. Uh, I cannot really cast anything. I just, I just feel like this is just zero my kind of deck. Like, if this was a forge, we get could use the PS Pro on it, but like, ah, uh, all right. I mean, this is zero like my kind of deck because it's like so, so random. Tell is on one. Okay. I will not endure this for very long. Ah, that's how they win, right? They just make a dude every turn. Lively and haste. I've seen enough. So it's like a basically when when I used to play StarCraft, there were some people that like to play these strategies. They were called cheese strategies. So it was something like it had to add some skill to it, but mostly you just played a played a very ru early rush attack, and then you basically hope that opponent was not prepared. And this is kind of what happens, right? You just play this and you hope you win. <sighs> so this is not allowing them to find things. Actually, they have on red Merryman, so maybe is actually good, better than something else, maybe. They have a lot of these activated abilities kind of be activated, so maybe the Arbor Elves are just kind of... I guess I'll keep them just in case I, I put it in turn one. Um, I guess this can exile the Aldous Merryman, which is not that end of the world. I mean, Spike Hitter is just... We're not gonna make an infinitely long creature. I actually should have kept the Ranger Captain to look for a Caustic Caterpillar. Um, yeah, then I'm just gonna pick one. I don't wanna draw too many. 
this is the kind of deck you don't see a lot of on LGSs because people kind of like you know they don't want to play against you if you do too much of this stuff. Okay, we have a scales, we have a Knight of Autumn, we have a Conclave Mentor. I mean, this hand is as good as it gets. Keep. I'm gonna start with shocking for a for a Temple Garden right away. We also play land destruction. I mean, this deck has it all, all the prison. They also play Steam and Spirit Guide. I mean, this is the definition of a cheese in Magic. Yeah, and the reason I'm going for this like this is that opponent doesn't win by thin margins, you know. If they win, it's because they have completely locked you down. Okay. Alison won? There you go. Like an asshole. Sorry. Getting annoyed. Oh, well, they put a Lotus Bloom suspend. So I'm just gonna look for a land nowadays and find another Temple Garden. So I will green one. Play the Conclave Mentor and pass the turn. And if they play, okay, this is suspended. So this rams them into the whatever they want to do, right? If they play. They have Slimy Helix. Um, I can play the Captain or the Walking Ballista, and I think I like playing the Captain more. So I can actually get the Caustic at the Peeler. Where is a two? I mean, two cards in hand. Huh. Where is it? Where are two? Mm, shouldn't do this because maybe I could just. Seems that they're done. Okay, we will attack them for three. Put them back to 20. They also play Lining Healers. They play all these cards that I like. Actually. When this suspend goes on the stack, we can sacrifice the Ranger Captain of Years and then they cannot cast this. This has non-creature spells, so... I'm um, just gonna play the Ballista. I'm gonna save the Caustic Cutter Pillar for another day. And also have an Eye of Autumn for this Chalice, so... So... Yeah, this is not It says at the beginning, now it has one time counter life, right? So now if I sacrifice, now I shouldn't be able to cast this. So they remove a time counter and then they cannot cast it. Can't recast it. Sadly. Put it at the bottom. I think I'm just gonna play this Knight of Autumn and shoot this. Oh, that's a Knight. I think we, we might have this. Like. There you go. We beat the stupid deck. Sorry. Um, get annoyed. Another 4 and 1. Damn it. This is the 4 and 1 times. So I am currently. So this league was a uh, 4 1. So I'm currently. 12, 15, and 5. So I have a um, 25% win ratio with the deck. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I can still be better. So, things I want to change. I've been talking about it a bit. I think Hushbringer, I mean, it's really, really bad against Zuro, but it's good against like humans. Let, let's have a look at MDG Goldfish, shall we? What time is it? I mean, it doesn't stop enough on the side. Yeah, probably doesn't stop enough. Oh, yeah, I know what I wanted to put. I wanted to put this. I wanted to put a Frexion Revolker. This is basically a pithing needle that can be found with Collected Company. And it can be used for many things like locking a Planeswalker. You know, like in general, I like, I like the card. Um, actually, you know, I'm. Eternal Witness, this sounds like a good card, but like maybe the Knight of Autumn has better synergy with the rest of the deck, like gaining life or counters. Um, 
I've got the Anafenza. I mean, Anafenza is great when you are on the aggro plan. That doesn't happen too often. I think Giver of Runes just gives you, like the turn one Giver of Runes, this also makes it so we have uh, 12 one drops, that makes it more likely that we actually play one one drop. I think the turn one Giver of Runes just, you know, forces your opponent to either like interact right now, or they will have like, they will have to have double interaction piece. To, to deal with you, right? So I think I would go for something like this next league. I mean, I'm just trying things, right? I mean, I will maybe play zero runes, and if I draw too many, I will be like, damn it, got it, get another thing in there. Um, the Skyjing was just having really good, especially in combination with Heliot. Project Champions have been really good. Um, I think the Anafenza is good, but it's, yeah, I think that having also having more three drops. It's a, it's a better, like, if you count this, so how much mana could you get out of a collected company, right? It's kind of the average of mana of this. So we have 12 plus 16, that's 28, plus 13 times 3, that's 30, 39. So 28 plus 39 is 67, 67, and then you divide that uh, by the amount of creatures that we have. So it's 67 divided by... 27. Descend the other by 27. I think I will need a calculator for this, but it's more or less. Actually, I can do it here in Excel. My keyboard is not in my language. So I don't know how to make a fine English, please. It was 67 divided by 20. It's like 2.48 worth of mana we're getting. So this is the kind of our average cost of one creature, right? So we get two creatures which is around five mana. So in on average, we will be a cat by playing Collected Company. Yeah, and the deck has been feeling really, really solid. Like uh, everything has a purpose, you know? Like um, I just like the Giver Runes also doesn't die to to, prow to Lava Dart. So I can cut the Arbor Elves more safely and still have like a, a, a turn one play i like to add i think we need more removal for for the prowess matchup so especially for the we didn't face it but the blue red matchup maybe we just need the three paths anyway i like the one of even mid sensor it stops uh tron it stops uh heavy fetching decks it stops scape shift it stops uh primeval titan decks any deck that's interested in searching the library a lot of course Eidolon stops the Prowess X, especially the blue red ones, and it's uh, good against any kind of combo deck. Romoka's command has been pretty impressive, like uh, the few times we actually cast it, it has been pretty good. Two Bales, I think, I don't want to go up three. You saw a problem with Bale, and I, that's why I'm like always kind of like, when you have a proactive deck like this one, Bale is kind of only good if you keep up the mana exactly when they will use it, right? And... And uh, and it seems that Bale is not yeah not that kind of card. Like uh, you need to be pretty pretty good at using it, I guess. Then another Knight of Autumn. We're going down one artifact hate with this because we don't have the Caustic Caterpillar, but instead we have the Phyrexian Revoker. Ah, whatever. I think it's uh, fine. I could see myself adding back the Caustic Caterpillar, but it hasn't been that impressive. Also, it's not good against Chalice, as we saw, because if they cast the... <laughs> if they get a Chalice on one, then the Caustic Caterpillar doesn't do anything. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah, 75% win ratio so far with this deck since I added the Arbor Elf. The first leak I, I don't count because I didn't have the Arbor Elves. Another card I'm considering is uh, Talia. Like, either main deck or sideboard. But then I don't know what I would cut. And I actually really, people are hating a lot on the hardened skills, but Clonclave Mentor things and it's not skilled, but this is actually what makes you win the game a lot of the times, right? And yeah, I really like to top up that deck that, that Helio when they didn't have this stupid ghostly prison thing or the other thing. 
that uh, doesn't allow to activate abilities and then we just kill them with a walking ballista and Heliot. That felt good, man. And it really felt good to exile a Ranger Captain of Eos, like sacrifice Ranger Captain of Eos and then they couldn't cast the Lotus Bloom. Mm -hmm. That also felt really nice. Anyway, that is the video, th guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Another 4 1 with this deck. We are on the 4 1 train, and yeah, this is picture poker. Just see. And yeah, I'm liking it a lot. I'm liking it a lot. You should give it a try. I think it's ma it plays out much better than you think. Like, once you try it, you realize it's actually really, really powerful. The combination of Avara with the PS Pro makes for a lot of mana, and this deck really uses mana really well with Heliod, Ranger Captain. Walking Ballista has a lot of mana sinks, and you know, we didn't do it this league, but accelerating turn to collect a company really, really wins some games. You know, it's basically free game at that point. You're able to like something like collect a company turn two into like Helio turn three, or like collect a company. Yeah, I forgot to say this. I'm, I mean, I'm just kind of talking a lot now, but one of the reasons I realized so let, let's look at it like this. I want to have at least 8 2 drops and at least 12 1 drops for the following reason. Let's say we a very common line of plays to play UWS spell turn 1. So you have 3 mana turn 2. Then you play your 1 drop. You probably will have 1 1 drop in, sorry, 3 drop in your in your hand. Then turn turn 3, you could have this following combination. You could have either 2 2 drops, which would be really strong, like to play Conclave Mentor and Scanji Moose or Conclave Mentor and Walking Ballista because here, 2 2 drops. Or you can have a 3-drop and a 1-drop. Right? But if you play too many 2-drops, then you don't have enough 1-drops, and then you basically unuse one of your manas. Sometimes on turn 3, and we don't want that if you don't draw the collected common. So I think this ratio of having a very well-balanced 1-drop to 2-drop to 3-drop ratio also makes us more resilient to Chalice of the Void. I know. And the Giver of Runes can also provide a, a ton of utility. I, I, I will miss an offense in the matches we need to be aggressive on. And that's true. And maybe there is a point on cutting like a couple of Conclave Mentors and playing an Offensa, but it, it has... Or even cutting a Scavenging Ooze and playing an Offensa and cutting maybe the Mean Sensor from the sideboard. Anyway, lots of choices. I'm excited to keep testing this deck. I will be streaming this after... Well, you will not... This will be uploaded next week, I guess, or whatever. So, yeah, I will be streaming in the morning these days and we can play more. Or I can play Mono Green. Or I can play this Beauty. Or I can play Yagmoth. All of them cool options. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.